All right, in the home network video, I said I really needed a UPS, and here it is. I finally got one. In this video, I'm going to set this up. We'll do some testing and play around with a couple smaller computers here to see how it performs, get it exporting metrics to a Prometheus instance, and ready to put in the rack. We might have an assistant today. What do you think? All right, I had a nice little panic there where I thought it was broken. I've never had a UPS before. And at, at least with this one, the 1500, if you just press it like you would expect, it turns itself off right away. So I was just reading the manual and the proper way is you press and hold this for a couple seconds till it beeps at you. And now it'll stay on. So if you buy one of these and it seems like it's broken, there's a proper boot up sequence you have to go through like and it's just holding the power button for a couple seconds. Here's my testing setup and we'll go over some basic theory of operation here. So I've got this Lenovo plugged in to the UPS. I also have this Raspberry Pi plugged in. And they're both on so you can see the green light there and that's actually the output from that guy. And then over here you can see the red light on the Pi is on. They're both plugged into the UPS, so the Pi and the Lenovo. Got the UPS plugged in to this outlet here that I can turn off with that switch. And so I haven't, I haven't done this yet, so I'm recording it live the first time I'm seeing it. But what should happen is I turn that power off. This thing should switch into battery backup instantly, and these machines should remain on. And so there's, I think the UPS is going to scream at us. It's going to beep and stuff. I'll, I'll do my best to minimize the impact of that <laughs> during editing here. So hopefully it's not too annoying, but let's go ahead and flip the switch. The UPS is making different noises now. There is no power to it. So like the power's off, the computers are still on, and then yeah, now it's screaming at us. Uh, and now it's saying that it's at 6% load, drawing 63 watts, 97% battery. Um, and yeah, sorry about that. That's going to be annoying. Um, but yeah, the Pi is still on. The computer's still on. It's usable. And so let me flip this back. I think it's going to beep a little more at us as it switches over. It's waiting. It probably has a grace period in case the power is fluctuating, you know, during a power outage. Um, and I heard the noise it's making change. It's no longer on battery mode. Um, it's on this input mode now meaning it knows it's plugged into the wall. Pi is still on. This thing's still on. So yeah, that's really exciting. That's awesome. Now we're going to get into a more advanced setup now that I know it works. Basically, you can install some software uh, on a machine that acts as the server or host, and you plug that in to the UPS with a USB, and other machines can actually listen to the server uh, with a client version of the software and uh, know if they should power themselves down. So basically what happens is you have one machine plugged in via USB to the UPS, and you can have as many others as you want listening to determine the, the state of things. And when this thing goes into battery mode, the server can, can tell all the clients, hey, you guys need to shut yourselves down because we're on battery mode, and that's how I'm going to have my servers behave in the rack. So uh, let's get that set up, and I'll walk you through it. Okay, brief aside, I actually ended up moving the test setup out of that room. It was way too loud. <laughs> this thing makes quite a bit of noise with its fans. Um, they're drowned out by the servers right now, but uh, having it in that room, it was it was not going to be a good recording for you guys. So uh, basically what's going to happen is I'll, I'll walk through the software. I'm going to make this Raspberry Pi the host, and it's going to notice when power goes out, we'll simulate a power failure, and this thing will be a client. And what's going to happen is... It will shut itself off after we uh, simulate that power failure when we've got the software all uh, configured and running. So let's go do that now. All right, so the software we use to make this server client stuff possible and uh, listen to the UPS and do things when the power is going out is a suite of open source software called Network UPS Tools, or NUT, NUT for short. And so they have a bunch of compatible UPSs, and you can go to the website and see... Um, all of them and the drivers that are required to use them and the level of support. And that was one of my requirements for buying any UPS, which is it needs to work with NUT. And 
the Trip Light 1500 uh, definitely does. So if we go back over to that Raspberry Pi, that's the one I'm going to set up as what's called the server. So it's going to be physically connected to the UPS via USB. So if I ask this thing about U U USB devices, the Trip Light is one of them, obviously. And then Nut comes with a bunch of tools so we can uh, actually have it scan USB devices and see which ones it knows about and can work with. Uh, and in our case, it recognizes the trip light, no problem, knows its vendor ID and all sorts of metadata, inf metadata and pieces of information about it. It's got a generic driver that is going to allow it to talk with the UPS. Um, and so long story short, this is set up as a server. This video isn't necessarily a tutorial on how to do this. I'll link in the description to other great YouTube videos I used to figure out how to set this up. It's not too bad. Uh, and lots of folks have gone through it already. This is more just a an overview of how it all comes together and why you'd want to do it in your home lab and how I'm going to use it. And so over on that other machine, this the Lenovo is called Workshop Linux. Uh, it obviously is not connected to the trip light via USB and we can run the, the scanner. Obviously it's not going to find it, but you do get a, a suite of tools uh, when you install Nut uh, to wire all this up. So one of them is called UPS C and over on the host, the UPS Pi, I've configured it as a UPS called Triplight, and we can ask UPS Pi uh, about it via this tool. So it'll spit back a bunch of information <clears throat> about the UPS. So the charge, the runtime, all sorts of stuff. And so the takeaway here is that we now have a link between that UPS Pi, the, the Raspberry Pi that's plugged in via USB to the Triplight and any clients that I want to connect to it and, and learn about the state. And so the way you can configure this and the way I have it configured is when the UPS goes into battery mode, the host will let the clients know, hey, uh, this thing is in battery mode. You need Here's like a, um, a message for you. You need to do something about that. And this thing has been configured to after 30 seconds, it'll shut itself off. Um, and another thing I'm running on the UPS Pi is a exporter to Prometheus. So I'll show you that. And over here, I have on those VMs uh, in my Proxmox server, I'm running Grafana, which is a time series database to store all sorts of information. It's super popular in, in the software development and uh, SRE DevOps world. Uh, and Grafana is a visualization tool on top of it. So you, there's a bunch of different ex, what are called exporters that understand all the information coming from Nut, all the UPS details, and put it into a format that Grafana can understand. And so, for example, I set this up a little while ago. So let's look at the last 15 minutes. So you can see this thing knows the battery charge, it knows the volts uh, and, and the power going out, and it keeps a time series chart over time, obviously. And nothing has changed here because the UPS has just been on and plugged in since I since I wired up these metrics. Um, but this is kind of cool because you can pump all sorts of other data into Grafana uh, for home lab use or home automation use. And I really liked the idea that I could send it here and you can set up alerts here to send yourself emails or messages or whatever, um, maybe when the battery is getting low or when it's flipped into a different status other than um, power coming in. So I just wanted to point that out. I'll link in the description as well to the exporter I used. And so now what we're gonna do is go back over to my test setup and we'll simulate a power failure and we should see that other Lenovo machine turn off after 30 seconds. All right, so back in here to recap, the Pi is plugged in via USB to the trip light and it's acting as a nut server. This thing, is just on the network and it's been configured as a nut client, which knows how to talk to that server. And when this thing loses battery, if 30 seconds goes by, this thing is gonna shut itself down. And so what I'll do is I'll simulate a power outage by flipping this switch, which will cut the power coming in to the UPS. Uh, again, it's gonna start making a lot of noise, so I'll probably time lapse the 30 seconds. But here we go. We'll flip this guy. This is in battery mode now. And what we should see over here is a bunch of messages about um, the UPS uh, going into battery mode. And then this thing noticing, and it's going to schedule a shutdown for itself. All right, so that guy shut down. 
And uh, obviously, after 30 or so seconds, this thing shut itself off. And in a real power failure situation, I would have I'm going to have these big, um, super power hungry servers shut themselves off safely and cleanly, especially important for the NAS. And then I'll leave all my network gear running. And, you know, you just hope that the power is going to come back in time. <laughs> I wanted to show Grafana really quick again to show why it's useful to get those metrics into something like Prometheus and Grafana. So you can see while I was running that test, the line voltage obviously dropped to zero because it was unplugged essentially, uh, and then spiked back up when I turned it back on. And then it went under load for a while as it was powering things off the battery uh, during that period. And of course the battery charge went down a little bit. And so Grafana can see all that because we're exporting it from the nut host, which is kind of cool. So that's an overview of the UPS I bought, the Triplight 1500, and how I'm going to use it in the rack. So in another video, I'll actually rack mount it. I'll clean up the rack a little bit and we'll do some measurements. So we'll see what kind of power the whole rack draws. I'm a little nervous because even during my testing with just that Lenovo and a Raspberry Pi, the UPS drops like several percentage you know, points, uh, the battery drops. So those two big servers pulling 100 plus watts are really going to rip into it during that time period before they've decided to shut themselves down. One of my goals here was the number one goal is to safely shut down the TrueNAS. So all, all the data on there, I do care about it. And so when there is a power outage, I want that machine to shut down. I don't really care about the rest of the stuff. It's not as catastrophic if uh, the other stuff has issues. Uh, and then the second goal was to hopefully be able to power the network and the internet when there's a power outage. So we have internet and can use our phones on Wi-Fi and everything. Um, that was sort of like a, a tangential goal. And so it might come down to the point where I got, I get another UPS just for that. Not sure. And I also wanted to point out that I'm running the nut host on the Raspberry Pi because that one doesn't draw a lot of power and I want it to always be on during a battery situation. Um, so it'd be kind of awkward if I, if on the Proxmox machine, I had a VM running the, the host, I could do that, but it will in turn shut itself off eventually. So it felt cleaner to have the host always on, or at least while there's battery, have it on and, and running on the, the Pi directly. So yeah, hope you like what you saw. And uh, there will definitely be more episodes about this UPS, my Proxmox server and more home lab stuff. So thanks for watching.